Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Okay, so today we are going to talk about regrinds. Okay, regrinds are something I don't really care for all that much. Okay, uh, I I'm talking about like somebody calls up, says, hey, I got a knife. I want you to regrind it. Can you do that for me? Almost always I'll say no. Okay, and the big reason for that is that First of all, it's typically on somebody else's knife, some other maker's knife, right? Um, I really don't care for working on other maker's knives. Um, you know, usually they're not in the steel that I work in or the heat treat that I'm familiar with. Um, you know, I mean, every maker makes knives. I mean, every true maker. I mean, we're talking about guys that, you know, develop knives that that work the way they want them to okay we're not talking about your your guy that you know orders up a blank off uh, Jantz knife making supplies supply slaps on some handles sharpens a thing and then engraves his, his name on the side of it okay we're talking real knife makers right every knife maker makes his knives and plays a balancing act between the steel type, the heat treat, and the grind, and then the intended use uh, uh, of the knife also. And then combine that with feedback from his own use, and then, you know, feedback from his customers, um, you know, and, and you, you come up with a total package. Now somebody comes up and they says, hey, this knife is too thick, and they send it in to you, and they want you to thin that thing out just as much as you can, right? Well, you thin it out, and maybe you thin it out too much, and now all of a sudden, uh, you know, you return it to the customer, and they start having chipping problems, or they start having rolling problems, because, hey, Wyatt, hey, there's she video Because you've ground, you've changed the, um, ge the geometry of that knife outside of, uh, you know, basically, I mean, I mean, you've changed a major function of the the three legs of of, um, of knife performance. That being steel type, heat treat, and geometry. You can't change one a whole lot without messing with the other two, if that makes any sense. Okay, so a straight up, you know, hey, this knife is too chunky. You know, I want you to, you know, grind the thing, uh, you know, half as thick as what it is right now. It's not something I'm normally willing to do, right? But that does not mean that it, a knife can't be improved. And for me, that falls under... So I got a can over here to start keeping all the, um, the tennis balls and the, um, the dog bones and everything kind of in one spot. And... And Wyatt's just not going to be happy until he has every single dog bone and tennis ball out of that can and all spread out on the floor the way it should be, right? Okay. Um, thinning it out, okay? This, to me, kind of falls under an advanced, uh, medium to advanced sharpening technique, if we have to put a name to it, and something that is well within the realm of what is possible at home with a normal sharpening stone or maybe a slightly oversized sharpening stone. Okay, so what I have, we're gonna see how long we can, uh, honestly, how long we can make this video. I got two different knives here. I've got a uh, uh, Faberware, um, you know, Walmart special. Uh, kind of a very light convex grind maybe, or maybe just a, a poor flat grind. And then we've got one of my one of my very first kitchen knives in my 1095. Um, so, you know, that way we've got two, uh, you know, two different classes of knife. We've got a really soft stainless steel knife, and then we've got a, you know, differentially hardened um, 60, 61, 62 Rockwell 1095 to play with. Okay, so what we're going to need is uh, we are going to need not really a special stone, but we're going to need a stone that's got some grinding power, okay? 
um, everybody's got their favorite stones, whether it be, you know, naturals, um, synthetics, uh, diamonds, uh, ceramics, all that kind of stuff, right? This is a spot for a very aggressive, very consistent um, synthetic stone. My two picks for this are going to be the Norton Crystalline uh, Coarse Fine. Okay, this is going to be my first pick because it'll handle an awful lot of pressure. My second pick is if you don't like oil stones, um, the King uh, 200-1000 combination water stone, or just get yourself a straight up uh, the 200 grit, uh, you know, a single stone. Uh, the Norton Norton sells a 220-1000 also, but I think it's about twice the price of the King. Um, I've got both of them, and honestly, I really can't tell much of a difference, so the King's cheaper, run with that. Okay, the reason I, I picked the, the Norton um, Crystalline is because it is a silicon carbide stone, okay, that is uh, very friable, okay, which means that, uh, you know, as you work it, uh, it will release abrasive and expose fresh abrasive underneath it. Okay, so that you're constantly working on fresh abrasive. When you're doing some serious heavy duty grinding like this, okay, you need a stone that's gonna keep up with you, all right? If you pick like uh, a diamond stone, uh, just for example, I mean, you guys know how much I love my, uh, uh, my DMT and my Smith's, uh, you know, 325 diamond stones. You know, you start really laying into a diamond stone with a knife like we're about to do, and you're going to strip the diamonds out of it, and it's going to be no good, and there goes 60 or 80 bucks. The water stones, while they're my second choice, the synthetic water stones, while they're my second choice, typically, I mean, we're going to start bearing down on these knives a little bit to, you know, really grind away material fairly quickly. And water stones are typically too friable for this sort of a work in my mind, okay? Now, once we get to the point where we get our knife uh, about where we want it, then you'll come back in and you'll use either that one or the King 1-6, one, uh, one you know, to, uh, to put whatever kind of finish you want back on the knife. All right, but to get to begin with, just ripping that steel off these are really, really hard to beat, the Norton uh, Crystalline Stones. Um, this is not really a place in my mind for naturals like uh, Arkansas Stones. Um, ceramic Stones, I don't really use those all that much. I honestly can't imagine that they would be very good in an application like this. Uh, the few ceramics that I have played with, they tend to glaze over. Okay, so we got a paper towel, we're putting it on the bench and wetting it down. We got our, our riser block, you know, a chunk of old 2x4, putting it down. Putting another uh, paper towel down. Now, you can use your typical 8 inch by 2 inch, you know, your normal uh, Norton Crystalline, right? And if you're just doing pocket knives or some paring knives or something like that, that might be the stone to stick with. You know, you don't have to go out and get an extra one. If you're going to be doing a lot of it, now you are a serious knife person, and a serious knife person needs a serious stone. This right here is the Norton... Um, Basically, it's this stone right here, only it's the jumbo version, okay? I mean, this is a serious chunk of, chunk of stone here. It is two and a half inches wide, 12 inches long, and almost an inch and a half thick. All right, and we are going to use mineral oil for this. Lots of guys like using um, uh, Dawn and water on this type of stone. For a normal everyday sharpening, you know, I don't think that matters all that much. For this right here, where we're going to be producing heat, and we're going to be inducing quite a bit of wear on both the stone and the knife, 
you really want a good lubricant and for that uh, we're going to go this is straight up mineral oil um, they also call it wooden bamboo oil you could use baby oil but my gosh that stuff stinks and it stays on your hands forever it seems okay so this is the setup that we're going to use to grind the coarse side of that Norton uh, crystalline combination let's start with the uh, Faberware all right now um, there's two different There's two different ways that we can go about doing this, okay? Um, we're gonna do the first one on this Faberware, and then we'll do the second one on the, um, uh, my 1095 one. And this, this might be a couple of part series by the time I cut it all up. <coughs> this class of knife, okay, it is a soft, inexpensive, stainless steel knife that retails for $12.97 at Walmart, and I got on clearance for $5, okay? They did not put that great of a heat treat on this knife, okay? They, they just didn't. It's, um, it's fairly soft steel, it's, um, but it's also tough as nails. I mean, this is, I mean, Faberware pretty much put out this knife and they said, hey, we need a knife that's going to... Um, you know, do okay even if somebody takes it out into the garden and they're digging up, you know, potatoes with the thing. And then they want to bring it in, rinse it off, and then cook dinner with it, right? So they wanted a knife that was extremely durable, right? So this is pretty soft. I mean, well, it just is. So you cannot grind this too, th if you grind it too thin, the steel won't be able to support an edge, okay? So if you get this thing too thin, that edge is just gonna fold when, I mean, you can do something as simple as, uh, you know, hitting the cutting board too hard and that edge will start folding over. I mean, it's, they're really that soft when you get them too thin. <coughs> Ask me how I know. My wife uh, likes the Chicago cutlery and one time I uh, uh, ground her knife too thin and sure enough that edge just folded all over the place. So there are two different really ways to go about regrinding these knives. If you do a full regrind, okay, whereas you remove metal from the, I mean from the whole side Okay, as in like you lay that sucker flat on the stone and thin the whole thing out. More than likely you're going to start running into problems with, uh, you know, the, the, the blade not or the steel not being able to support that thin of an edge. Okay, so what I tend to do on knives like this is instead of regrind the whole thing, I just want to do what I call laying the edge back. Okay, so the factory edge bevels are pretty much from my thumbnail over, okay? That last sixteenth of an inch or so. And it is pretty thick, so we'll we'll grab a, a measurement on it here. Uh, we'll set the, the micrometer at 25 thousandths. Okay, so that uh, it's 25 thousandths of an inch thick at about three thirty seconds of an inch back. All right, at the shoulder of the sharpening marks, it's still about twenty thousandths thick. Okay, which in my mind is just insanely thick, right? So what we're going to do is instead of regrinding the whole thing, we're just going to take that edge and lay it back some. All right, and I guess the magic marker will be the. We'll kind of show you what I'm after here. And we will put these stones over here. We'll get ourselves a brick to put you on. Okay. 
So we got the edge marked up with a magic marker, right? So that you can kind of see where we're grinding. Okay, that is flat, all right? That would be my normal sharpening angle for my uh, eight inch class chef's knife, right? That is where I feel the factory edge angle. Let's take another stroke. Okay, now you can kind of see, let's get, Now you can kind of see where that that uh, magic marker is worn off, and I hit the factory edge angle pretty, I mean, pretty much right on. Okay, so now what we're going to do to improve the cutting performance of this blade, <coughs> without doing a whole regrind, is we're just going to lay that edge back. So instead of the edge uh, angle ending here or the edge bevel end here, we're going to lay it back to say in the middle here. So we're going to double or even triple the uh, the width of that edge angle okay and the way we do that is so this is flat that right there is a factory angle we're gonna drop it down to about here okay Well, you can tell it's early in the morning and my stone is rocking. Let's get this over here. Otherwise, Joe's going to end up slicing his finger all up. I think that board might be warped. Well, maybe we'll just have to roll with it. Okay, grab another paper towel. Okay, you can see right there that we've pretty much doubled, doubled the width of our edge bevel there, right? Okay, and we're all, we're kind of sort of coming up onto a burr a very light one on the other side. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now we're coming up to a light burr on the other side. And like I said, you can see that that edge bevel, well, I can see it, you might not be able to see it, but that edge bevel is about twice what it was before we started, okay? That right there, I mean, that simple, what is that, a minute and a half aside, something like that, that will be night and day cutting performance, okay? I suppose I probably should have brought like a carrot and uh, a cutting board and grabbed the bathroom scale so I should have, could have showed you. But <clears throat> your wrist will love you just for that minute and a half on both sides. 
Okay, so now what you could do is go ahead, swap this the swap to the fine side, and then polish out those scratch marks. Now we got a burr on that side. Got a burr on that side. Now we'll go ahead and start weakening things. Now we are going to quickly knock that burr off in the end grain on this 2x4. This softer stainless, it'll tend to want to hold that burr. Now we'll backstroke a couple of times to kind of repair where the burr got ripped off the edge. And you know what, for an inexpensive chef's knife, and a quick, and of course I just jacked the edge up on the, the stone. You know, there's some hair off my arm. Not too bad. Now, this... Okay, now that is, like I said, two or three minutes on either side, and that will, I mean... It'll almost be like night and day when you're cutting, okay? Yes, the sides of the blade are still on the thick side, right? But that first portion where the edge is actually initiating the cut into, you know, your carrots, your, uh, um, well, potatoes are so easy to cut. It's, you know, uh, like carrots, um, uh, like sweet potatoes, you know, things like that, that thinness right there is going to be, I mean, like I said, it'll be like night and day. Let's also test, okay, so our quarter inch back measurement won't have changed because we didn't grind anything back there. The thickness at the shoulder of the edge will probably increase because now the shoulder of the edge is pushed back and it's at 20 thousandths. But the thickness halfway where the other where the old edge angle was, has now dropped to 12 thousandths, okay? So we've taken <coughs> four thousandths aside, you know, four thousandths off this side and four thousandths off this side. will make a huge difference. So in the lifetime of this knife now, what you would do is go ahead and take this knife, put it in your kitchen, you know, use it for the next week or two or three, you know, cutting your, your normal cooking habits. And then kind of decide, okay, well, is that, um, is it still too thick? Am I starting to get edge damage? Is the edge acting like it's folding over, like it's it doesn't have enough steel to support it? Or does it feel like I could go a little bit thinner? If it feels like you could go a little bit thinner, then the next time that you need to sharpen it, these dogs are freaking crazy today. Doc just stepped on the, the foot pedal for my bandsaw, chasing another ball. Um, if you feel like you could, it could be a little bit thinner, you're not getting a whole lot of edge damage, then go ahead and instead of sharpening it at the factory angle, or the angle that you were sharpening it, lay that edge back a little bit, a little bit more. And then keep laying that edge back a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, until you start getting edge damage in your normal work. Once you start getting edge damage in your normal work, stop lowering your angle, 
either keep it the same and let um, let the blade kind of catch up, okay, or maybe increase it or use a micro bevel uh, to thicken that edge up a little bit to where you don't get damage anymore. Um, and that's honestly, that's about all I'd uh, suggest you do on a typical <coughs> a typical knife that's kind of balanced, okay? So where you have like this knife, I mean, like I said, it's inexpensive, it's, it's soft stainless steel and everything, but it, it's balanced, okay? The steel is soft, but the geometry is thick to make up for the soft steel. You follow me? If the steel was hard, then, or harder, and fine grain, then you could thin the blade out considerably, and then it would be a balanced knife again, okay? Something like this, one of my very early kitchen knives, this is an extremely unbalanced knife for anything but a meat cleaver, okay? I mean, I thought I was grinding thin back then, and I was, I really wasn't, okay? So this knife is a hard 1095 steel, but with a geometry that's dang near as thick as this, okay? So in that case, something is wrong, all right? This is a very unbalanced knife. You've got hard steel with a good heat treat, but with a poor geometry for an intended use. If this was a meat cleaver, it'd be perfect, but this was kind of my uh, first go at like a Santoku maybe? I don't know what I was thinking when I ground this thing. Um, and a Santoku should be quite a bit thinner than that. So I think on the next video, we'll go ahead, I mean, I'll keep everything out, I'll just turn you off and then turn you right back on again and start another video, and then publish it the next week. We're going to go ahead and like grind five minutes on each side and see how much steel we can take off with this Norton Crystal. So, um, kind of an overview. When you're doing regrinds, oh, one more thing. Okay. Remember how I was talking about your stone selection and making sure that you've got a stone that's got some grinding power? Okay, I didn't get all of it, but see all that gray? All the gray here that was on the sides of the knife? Ah, <coughs> oh, give that ball up, man. That's all stone. Stone and steel particles, okay? If you're not getting this on your paper towels when you're done regrinding a knife, then your stone is really not working to its full potential in that application, okay? If you're just touching up an edge on an Arkansas or you're going for that mirror finish, you know, so that you can, you know, take a, a knife edge and lay it down on a piece of newsprint and show off all to your buddies, hey, look, you know, it's, it's a mirror edge and all that kind of stuff, isn't that great? Okay, on that, you're probably not gonna get a whole lot of, um, this is called swarf. But on that, you're really not removing material, you're just, you know, just polishing things. When you're doing regrinds, knife maintenance, grinding out chips, thinning out edges, stuff like that, you need a stone and steel combination where you see that swarf, okay? If you're not seeing that swarf, then you're not <coughs> really removing material as efficiently as you should. Okay, <coughs> so other than that, um, the recap is, is that if a knife's too thick, if it's, um, if it's a balanced knife, but it's just too thick, first try laying your edge back, okay? Um, that's the quickest and the easiest way to go about it. Second is you need a stone that's got efficient grinding power, okay? That's gonna be your Norton Crystalline combination, of course fine, okay? Or your, your lower grit, um, king or uh, or other you know uh, synthetic water stones. All right. Um, like I said, my preference is for the, the the Norton Crystalline because it is an oil stone. It'll handle a whole lot more pressure without dishing than the the water stones will. If you try regrinding on a 1,000 grit stone, you're going to be there for days. I mean, it's just it's awful. Um, and then the other part is do it a step, uh, you know, a little bits at a time. 
you know, instead of sitting, you know, eight hours on one knife all at one go, you know, just incorporate thinning that blade out or laying the edge bevel back into your normal sharpening routine. And it'll be, you know, it could be a couple of weeks or it could be a couple of months and that you and that knife will start to kind of get a feel for how thin you can go. And, you know, I mean, if the edge is truly that thick for the first little bit, then make that your rough use knife. You know, use that knife for, you know, cutting chicken bones or, or um, you know, cutting frozen steaks or, you know, the rougher use that you wouldn't use your fine knife for. Okay, so um, I'm going to turn you off and then turn you back on and then do, do a, a little bit more in-depth regrind on this one. <coughs> so, uh, until the next week, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. Uh, you can visit me on the web at caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.